actually start stitching here. Now, I have my background fabric, it's all marked up, front, back, pressed beautifully. I want you to have everything pressed really well. I've got my applique shapes at least for one corner sitting over here and I have a design loaded up on the machine here and I've stitched out color number one. Now, which designs do you need to stitch? That all depends on your hoop size and it turns out that there are three different situations uh, depending on your hoop size. There's another video after this one that will tell you exactly which designs you need to stitch and exactly where you need to stitch each of the designs. I'm going to show you right now how to stitch one of the corners for the 24 inch block in the position that's over here. Now as I'm standing looking down on this I've got the fabric in a diamond shape and I'm looking at the corner on the right side. Now I've got the top marked here so the top's kind of going off there. I'm working on this corner and I'm going to be using the uh, the stitching the intersection at the nine inches from center corner right here. That is all explained in the video that follows in terms of exactly where to stitch each design. I'm going to show you how to actually stitch each of the designs. Now it doesn't matter which design you're doing, whether you're doing the corner unit all in one, whether you're splitting it up into two hoopings or whether you're splitting it up into three hoopings, how to stitch any of the designs is exactly the same. Okay, so I am going to go grab the hoop off the machine. I've already stitched color number one. That's a placement line that tells me how to align this fabric onto the hoop so that the design goes exactly where I want it. Let me go get that hoop and then we'll take a look at how to do that. Here's the hoop. I've got a piece of medium weight tear away stabilizer in there, specifically OESD Ultra Clean and Tear, and I've stitched color number one. Now color number one is always going to be a placement line that shows you where to put the background fabric and in this case we're stitching in a corner so the placement line is actually two diagonal lines. There's always going to be an intersection somewhere or a corner point. Now depending on which design you're going to be stitching you'll have a diagonal line. It might be that you stitch out a plus sign or a cross somewhere in the hoop, but you'll have something that indicates an intersection. Now then, for this first design that I'm going to stitch out, I'm actually going to stitch the design M01 24i border 01. And you need either a Bonina Jumbo hoop, which I have here, or um, a Brother Luminaire gigantic hoop or a Solaris, um, the Baby Lock Solaris gigantic hoop. Not everybody has those, so make sure you refer to the instructions that tells you which set of designs you need to stitch for your hoop size. Um, the way that you actually stitch the design is exactly the same. So I've got curl number one stitched out, there's my intersection. All of the intersections that we stitch out on the stabilizer are going to line up with an intersection on the nine inch from center lines on the background fabric. So can you see here, that's the nine inch in the corner. I've got the background fabric rotated so that it looks like a, a, a diamond and the name of the game here is to align that intersection with this intersection. It's actually super easy. Um, if you don't get it the first time around, start again from the beginning, try again. You will be a master at multiple hooping by the time you finish with this project and it is going to transform the way you look at embroidery for making quilts, um, specifically machine embroidered applique and quilting in the hoop. 
you are no longer limited by the size of the hoop that you have. This particular um, set of designs or this particular quilt actually for the 24 inch blocks you can go down as small as an 8 inch by 8 inch square hoop 200 by 200 millimeters and for the 18 inch block you can do that in a 5 by 7 inch hoop. Now sure the smaller your hoop the more hoopings you have to do but just because you've got a 5 inch by 7 inch hoop in this project doesn't mean that you can't do it. You absolutely can and I am so excited about that and I'm so excited about the things that you're going to be able to do with your embroidery machine that maybe you didn't think were possible before. Okay so how to align that intersection there with that intersection there so that the stitching lines are all lined up. It actually takes one pin. That, that, that's pretty much it. And we're going to take the pin, put it through the intersection on the background fabric, and then we're going to guide that pin through the intersection on the stabilizer. Now I'm actually trying to do this left-handed so that you can see what I'm doing, hopefully. Okay, and you want to put that pin straight down. Uh, you want to make sure that you got the pin through both intersections. Now that pin has become a pivot point and you can see I can rotate the background fabric freely around that. Now I want to make sure that the pin is, or the fabric is actually right up against the stabilizer. Before I go a second further, I completely forgot to tell you I'm working on my June Taylor quilted cushion cushion quilters square and blocker. It's a padded ironing board and it allows me to put a pin all the way in. This particular tool is going to make your life so much easier for these multiple hoopings. I think they cost about um, $40, something like that. It's money well spent. Can't emphasize that enough. Um, if you don't have one to hand right now, a padded surface works, but you want to be able to push a pin in to a solid surface far enough that it's going to stay. Um, this one board, this one padded ironing board is the only one that I've come across that um, really helps you to do that. Um, if you have a flat sofa or a flat cushion or something like that, that will work, um, but th this board makes easy work of it. Okay, so once you've got the pin in and you've got your background fabric flat against the stabilizer and the hoop, now you're going to start lifting up at, um, at, at these straight line parts here. So I'm going to lift that up. And you can see on the back, I've, I can see not only the stitching, but also the line that I drew on there. Now, rotating around that pin, I am going to rotate everything until that is perfectly aligned. Now, I've got a bend in it, but um, can you see there that that is perfectly aligned? Now, in an ideal world, if this pin and just one of those um, ends is perfectly aligned, all the other three are all, always going to be aligned anyway, I do go ahead and check. That one is not actually perfectly aligned right now. So it's more than likely because I've got my pin um, not exactly in the center. So I'm actually going to do it right-handed this time, um, even though you might not be able to see exactly what I'm doing. But it will help move things along. And if you want to make sure that you get that pin in as vertically as possible. Okay, let's start again. Pull that back, rotate ever so slightly around the pin. You want to make sure at all times that the background fabric is right down onto the stabilizer and the hoop. Now when I go here, can you see that's actually perfectly aligned right there. Now if you want to pop a pin in, and we're going pin in vertically there. And I'm going to pop one over there. Those two points that I already confirmed are straight 
or are perfectly aligned. Now I'm going to flatten this out as far as I can go along that line to the edge of the hoop and bring that back. And can you see here, I'm perfectly aligned right there as well. That bit gets a pin. And the last one down here, when I scoot that all back, let's see if we can get that wrinkled out, we are pretty much perfectly aligned right there as well. So that gets a pin. Now that popped up, so we want to make sure that everything is flat against the hoop. Now, how do you make this, now that you've got it perfectly aligned, how do you make it stay where it's at? The answer to that is if you have stabilizer showing, you can use a spot of Scotch Magic Tape, bring mine in, and don't be frugal with this. Um, you want it to be as long as necessary. So make sure that everything's smoothed down. We're going to put some tape along there, making sure all that's smooth up there. I'm going to grab another piece of tape and tape up there. Now I'm going to say that is absolutely not enough to hold everything in place. I'm actually going to use a pin here. I'm just going to grab one of these. Now when I put these pins in, I'm actually putting it in almost flat. So th these pins went in straight down. These pins are going in almost flat and I'm actually pushing it into the board. I want to put uh, another pin over here and again, that pin is going in almost flat into the board. I'm going to put another pin up here. You see I'm pushing them in almost flat and then I'm actually going to put one here and I want to go as far out to the edge of the hoop as I can get. So pull that pin out and I'm going to put that there. This pin we don't actually need. Now the trick is to get the pins out of the board and brought up to the top of the fabric and the stabilizer in the hoop without ripping the stabilizer. This might take practice. Um, if you use up a piece of stabilizer on, in the hoop whilst you're practicing, just getting the knack of doing this, I say that's one piece of stabilizer money well spent on um, because you're going to need to be doing this a lot. So here's how we do it. Slide your fingers underneath the hoop, pull the pin out until you just hear it pop out of the board. Let's see here. There, it popped out of the board. Now, keeping everything flat, I want to push up from underneath at the same time that I'm kind of pushing down from on top. Same amount of pressure from above as below. And there you go, we've got that pin in. Now we're going to come around here to this pin, fingers underneath the hoop, and pull the pin out until you hear it popping out of the, the board, and then equal pressure from underneath as on top, you can just slide the pin in. We've got one more here. And we've got this last one up here. So now I have got that piece of background fabric exactly where I want it on the stabilizer in the hoop. Now then, there's actually a check that you can do to make sure that you're perfectly aligned and you can actually turn everything over and you can see here, because of all the lights that I've got, you can see the lines that are basted onto the background fabric you can see here the stitching line on the stabilizer and you can actually see that it's right on top of the line that's basted onto the background fabric. Now, actually I can see that. I hope that you're going to be able to see it. My recommendation is that you actually go hold this up to a window if it's nice and sunny outside 
or hold it up to a light source so that you can check here. Now, another thing that you can do, if you notice that you're not completely where you want to be, either take all the pins out, start again, or you can make minor adjustments in your embroidery, on your embroidery machine to move the design around in the hoops so that this line is perfectly aligned with what just stitched out onto the stabilizer. So, now that you're here, background fabric on the stabilizer in the hoop, we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to stitch color number two. That is going to give you a basting line around the design to hold everything securely in place. Now I know we've got all these pins and we've got this scotch tape, but we're, we're not taking any chances here. So the first thing the stitches in color number two is this basting line. The next thing it's going to stitch is the first layer of applique shapes. I will be back with you in just a minute when I've got that stitched out.